Hi Connies, this is Kun. If this is the first time you visit this channel, you know you have come to the right place because I'm going to share a lot of information you don't usually see in other YouTube channels. What's more, in an organized and systematic way. This is my first video about Genshin Impact. I know a lot of you guys have just started your journey, so I'll try to give you some important tips today to help saving your time and money. Most importantly, to avoid mistakes that can cause you a lot of trouble in the long run. I'll be covering topics related to Genshin Impact from the perspectives of free-to-play and semi-cash or light cash players. If you don't want to spend money or if you want to play in an efficient way without killing your wallet, then this is the right channel for you. Without further ado, let's go. Mining is one of the most important aspects in Genshin Impact because you need iron, white iron, or even crystals to craft weapons and to clear certain quests. There are a lot of guides or video guides online telling you to mine as much as you can, but mining in this game has to be done in an organized way. The reason why I'm saying this is because the refresh timer for each type of material is different. Basically, we can put these odds in three categories. The most common one is iron, and then we have white iron, lapis, and jade in the same grade. While crystal is on the top of the list, which is one of the most precious crafting materials in Genshin Impact. When you come across a crystal mining spot, it is advisable to put a pin on your map as a record. You can even use different pins to indicate which group of crystals you have mined in the last one or two days. So next time when you're ready to do some mining, you know you can go straight to that particular mining spot because they have already respawned. You don't have to run around different mining spots to search for these crafting materials anymore. This is a painful experience. I would like to say thanks to Ray who is one of my lovely goonies for sharing me his tips. His idea is to organize a mining route and then visit these mining spots in clockwise or anti-clockwise pattern. My suggestion, it is better for us to identify or select a specific mining spot as our starting point. If the crystal at this particular mining point is up, that means the rest of the mining spots on the route have respawned and it is time for you to go mining again. Any character using two-handed weapon is a good miner. You should always bring characters like Diluc, Noel, or Razor. Even if you don't have these characters, you can use Plunge Attack to break these odds because they usually can be found at the edge of a cliff or a mountain. Besides mining, you can also buy these materials from NPC like Shito in the Liyue Harbor, but with a cooldown once the items are sold out. Make sure you spend some time mining when you're exploring the vast wall of Genshin Impact because you need tons of these materials to craft an item. Not to mention, you also need multiple copies of weapons to refine and to unleash the potential of your weapon. Of course, you can also join other players' world to steal their precious metals like crystals, but I don't think you should do it this way because it is a little despicable to use this kind of trick. Vice versa, if you find something suspicious about people who join your world, you can always remove these players from your cop list. There is no potion in Genshin Impact. Your food is a potion. You're what you eat. So basically, how good is your cooking skill and how resourceful you are will decide how successful is your journey. You can buy your food from NPC or get your food from Quest, but it is always better to cook them yourself because if the food is perfectly cooked, its recovery or buff effectiveness is usually higher. Pay attention to the character who is cooking because their passive skill can lead to different results. If you are cooking food with attack buff, remember to use Xiangling. If you are cooking food with HP recovery or regeneration, please use Barbara instead because there is a 12% chance for them to produce extra food. Other characters also have their respective uh, passive skill for cooking, crafting, and alchemy, so don't forget to check it out. You can also use the materials to create processed food and you can find the interface right beside your cooking tab. These ingredients are extremely important for your recipes. It is pretty convenient to buy these ingredients from NPC but as a savvy consumer, you know you want to prepare this processed food by your own if you want to save more mola. Your stamina decides how far you can run, how far you can swim, and how high you can climb in this game. To increase your stamina gauge, you have to either offer animal killers or geo killers to the statue of seven. 
these essences scatter around the land of Tevat. If you miss any of them, you probably won't be able to cap your stamina gauge, which means your exploration will be affected and your experience will also be compromised. So it is very important to keep track of your progress and collect these essences in a systematic way. I've included two very nice websites to help you with the collection. You can find the links in the description below. They are totally free. One is in English, while another one is in Mandarin. You can even use these dedicated sites to discover chairs, mining spots, and places to harvest materials. If you're gliding and you're running off stamina, you can either use plunge attack or you can simply open a map to teleport to a waypoint to avoid death. You can use this trick too when you're swimming or falling, but please remember it doesn't work in call. You can also use characters with passive skills like Kaya and Ember to reduce the depletion of your stamina by 20% so you can spring longer and glide further. Exploration Genshin Pack should also be done in a systematic way. It is advisable to activate Statue of Seven when you come to a new map before you do anything else because it can help to unlock the area and dispel the fog. After that, don't pick up any quests because you don't want to spoil your experience. Straight away, go to light up any teleport waypoint you can see or find, then only start doing your quests. By doing this, you will be able to cut down a substantial amount of your travel time. This is extremely important because you don't want to climb uncountable mountains over and over again. It is super exhausting and annoying. During an adventure, please try everything you can see, clover fans, balloons, or even carrots on the ground. Don't let go any hints or treasure chests, because these are good sources to help you grow, and you can also use these loots to further enhance your weapons and artifacts. Resin is a very important in-game currency, but most new players, they just don't know how to use it. It is actually the action point or AP in gacha games. We only get one resin every 8 minutes, and it takes 16 hours to fully recover to 120 resins. Resin can be used to claim rewards after defeating certain bosses, lilai outcrops, or domains. These are important sources for experience, crafting materials, weapons, and artifacts. Of course, you can also complete these nomads or dungeons without spending any resin, but you won't be able to get any experience or rewards. So please don't let it cap, don't waste it. Try your best to spend to consume resin, because it will help you to level up with more experience, materials, and wonderful gears. Buying resins is not recommended for free players because it takes a lot of primo gems. But if you're a light cash player and want to progress faster, then it is fine to buy like one or two times a day through microtransaction. Talking to NPC is important in Genshin Impact because there are a lot of hidden rewards in this game. Meanwhile, remember to check posters, notices, NPCs to see whether they have any quests, hints, whether they are selling stuff like weapons, material, food, or recipes. It is a good way to get food or ingredients if you are too busy to farm. Some NPC offer um, limited items which can be very helpful in your journey, while some NPC sellers don't even have an icon on their head so you have to observe very carefully. The expedition system will be unlocked at rank 14, and this is a very useful way and also passive source to get extra materials when you go offline. The available slots for expedition will increase as you grow. You should always send out your characters for an expedition before you log off. You should also use this feature if there are extra characters who is not necessary to be included in your main team to maximize the gain. Daily commission will be unlocked when you hit rank 12. The experience given is based on the rank, which is around 175 to 225 experience per commission. Once you finish all the daily commissions, please don't forget to return to the adventurer guilds to claim your bonus rewards. These daily commissions are important sources for experience and primo gems. You can get 70 primo gems and 1500 experience every day. Leveling up all your characters is one of the most common mistakes among new players. 
In Genshin Impact, it is difficult to collect materials, experience scrolls, and more luck. If you don't give priority to your best or most useful characters, you're going to land yourself in a very awkward position due to a very demanding leveling process. In my opinion, you should use all your resources on your DPS unit, probably only one or two characters, because these are the characters that help you to grind, to complete quests and challenges. They are the most important assets. Other characters in your team like Ember or Kaya are just tools for elemental synergy. There is no need to spend too much resources on them unless you really really like these characters. Meanwhile, please don't spend too much resources on upgrading your artifacts, because these artifacts will be replaced once you reach rank 40. This idea applies to your weapons too. You will get 4 star weapons sooner or later. So it is not necessary to pump everything you have into your 3 star weapons. I'm not saying that 3 star weapons are bad. In fact, they're pretty good. And I'm using 3 star weapon for my most useful, most powerful character. But these weapons, they're not going to serve you for a very long time. Understanding the synergy between different elements is extremely important in Genshin Impact. From Vaporize, Frozen to Superconduct, the reactions between different elements are a lot more powerful than your normal attack. That's why you should fully utilize these reactions to defeat your enemies. Pay attention to your environment when you're fighting, especially water and rain, because you can use these advantages to pair your elemental skills to bring down your targets. The composition of a team is also vital, because characters with different elements help to create a variety of resonant effects. You can always check these effects when you're setting up your team. That's right, my lovely Kunis, just pick up everything in front of you. You can never have enough sweet flowers, you can never have enough meat, fish, mushrooms, and crabs. Every little bit of resource is needed in Genshin Impact. Even books in library are important, so you need to be very hungry, very very hungry, just like Paimon. <laughs> Basically, just like any other gacha games, it is advisable to draw wishes only when there is a red up event. Try to save for 90 pools or even 180 pools if you really want to get your favorite 5 star character when you're pulling event wish. There is a 50% chance for you to strike the promotional character when you get a 5 star character for the first time in this pool. If the first 5 star character you win in this event wish, is not the promotional character, then the next 5 star character you win is guaranteed to be the promotional character. It sounds fair and square, and you should always go for this wish. However, my experience, I did 161 event wish pool, but I only managed to get 2 5 star characters. There is no other 5 star item, not even one. 5 star items are almost a myth. Maybe I'm the most unlucky one whenever I come to Gacha, but the take home message is here. You have to be mentally prepared, seriously. Weapon Wish is fine, but you need to make sure you have the right characters for these weapons first. Otherwise, you won't be able to use them even if they are 5 star. On the other hand, the Standard Wish is a mixed pool for a variety of characters and weapons, but there is no red up for this pool and there are too many things included. So if you are aiming for certain character or certain weapon, it is better for you to avoid this wish. Genshin Impact is different from other games. Your world and your enemies become tougher and stronger as your rank grows. The same concept applies to your rewards and loots. The most important boss fights currently, which are the Wolf of North and Storm Terror, is reset on Monday morning. So if you want to get the best loots, it is usually more rewarding for you to finish these two fights on Sunday, because your world rank is definitely the highest before the reset. You can only claim your reward once per week, so if you decide to help your friend whose world rank is lower than yours, please do not claim the rewards because the item quality is based on the war rank of the host.
Last but not least, my personal tip for all the new travelers to Genshin Impact, please do not rush. The reason is very simple. If you level too fast, you have no enough materials to ascend your weapon or your characters. You will start in a very uncomfortable position because the difficulty of mobs and bosses increases together with the war rank, as I mentioned before. And this experience is a little discouraging. Just relax my lovely kunis, this is game, this is not competition so there is no need to compete with other players. Be cool, steady and play at your own pace. Enjoy what the vast world of Tevat can offer, appreciate your characters, your journey will certainly become more delightful if you compare less. Besides, we also run out of quests as we get closer to Adventure Rank 30. This is where you become doubtful about the gameplay mechanisms and also where you start to burn your resin because you are going to be desperate and don't know what to do. I will talk about this issue in my next video, so remember to stay tuned. I know this video is not perfect, if you have any tips for travelers from all over the world, please leave a message in the comment section below. I'm sure other travelers will be very grateful about your sharing. Know your game, know yourself, and play like a pro. This is Kun. I will see you again very soon. Ciao.